Hello guys, and welcome to Phoenix Wright, Ace Attorney, Justice for All. This is the sequel to the first Ace Attorney game, of course, which I will go ahead and link my Let's Play to that in the description. And I'm super pumped to be playing this because the Ace Attorney series is one of my favorite series of all time. It's been so long since my last Ace Attorney LP. I think I started my first Ace Attorney LP in January of last year, so that means it's been almost two years since the first game, which, gosh, time moves fast. Anyways, I don't want to preamble too much, let's just go ahead and get into the first case here, the Lost Turnabout. A few minutes later, District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Ouch. My head, it's throbbing. And why does it feel so foggy in there? Good morning. Ah, uh, good morning. What's wrong? You don't look so well. People are at their best first thing in the morning. Where's that fighting spirit? Sorry, but can you please turn the cheeriness down? My head sort of hurts. Roger that. Okay, I hope this is the right voice for her, because I don't want to move too much into Maya Fey territory. So, I might have to do something a bit different with her voice. I might have to do, like, a bit more of a nerdy voice, because of glasses. Um, am I in trouble or something? Huh? Trouble? Oh, wait, never mind. You're a policewoman, right? I thought maybe I'd done something wrong? What are you talking about? I'm the one in trouble. What? I'm placing my life in your hands today, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Life... in... my hands? You promised me. You said you would prove that I was not guilty. N not guilty Just when I thought all hope was lost, when all the other lawyers had laughed me off. Leave it to me, you said. You, the one and only Phoenix Wright, came to save the day. And yet like that, I was moved to tears, sir. I'll never forget what you're doing for me. Ever. What is this girl babbling about? Actually, I really love to watch court proceedings, and I always root for you to win. When I'm off duty, I like to come in here and... Eh? What's wrong? You've been acting really strange and you keep staring at me. You're making me kind of nervous, sir. Oh, sorry. Hmm. I'm afraid to ask, but here goes. So, this might sound bad, but, uh, who are you? What? M Mr. Wright, how can you say that? How can you do this to the fragile heart of a girl about to go on trial? You're absolutely horrible. No, I mean, I, I didn't mean it like that. Is this how a defense attorney treats his client, sir? I can't believe this. No, it's just, well, I think you have the wrong person. I'm... yes, I'm... I'm... who am I? Why am I drawing a blank? I'll just give the bailiff my uh, cop voice that I gave to all of the cops from Ghost Trick. The trial will begin shortly. Will the defendant and her lawyer please proceed to the courtroom immediately? The trial is about to start. I'm counting on you in there, okay? Hmm. I guess I must have amnesia. Let's see. What can I piece together? Hmm. From our conversation, I can safely say that I'm probably a defense attorney. And that girl. I said I'd prove her not guilty. I can't believe I made such an irresponsible promise. Ah! 
Someone please tell me this is just a bad dream. Why do I get the feeling this is one dream I won't be waking up from? So that's how they decided to do the tutorials for this game, is just clonk Phoenix on the head and give him amnesia. September 8th, 10 a.m., District Court, courtroom number 2. Ugh, I haven't done the judge's voice in so long. There are gonna be a, there's gonna be a ton of different voices that I haven't done in a while that I can't wait to do. Court is now in session for the trial of Maggie Bird. Your prosecution is ready, Your Honor. What is it, Mr. Wright? Um, uh, are you talking to me? Do you see any other defense attorneys here? I guess not. Ugh. Now then, are you ready? Well, to be completely honest, no, we're not. We're not really suited to be in a court of law if we've just received a bunch of head trauma and now can't remember a thing. So no. Um, what if I said no? Would that be alright? Of course it wouldn't. Then why bother asking me to begin with? Actually, you see, Your Honor, my memory is kind of... The court will not hear the defense's excuses. Because the defendant is a member of the police, this case is under great scrutiny. Also, uh, I might change up some of the voices that I've done, because I remember that the, the judge was kind of like, hey, like down here, like sort of like a, like not gravelly, but this sort of voice right here. Uh, but I might change that up because the judge has like a canon voice that's like a bit more deep and a uh, bit more old man like in uh, the fifth game in the fifth game in this series. So I might mess around with some of the voices, see what works, what doesn't. Therefore, we must make this trial fair but swift. I believe I have told you this before. I hope you're, you're not telling me you've forgotten. Actually, I did. Mr. Payne, your opening statement, please. Yes, Your Honor. As I'm sure you're well aware, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. What's worse, her lover was a fellow police officer. A policeman? You did what to a policeman? It wasn't me, and besides, Dustin and I, we weren't lovers like that. In any case, the prosecution will prove that the guilty party is none other than the defendants. I was scared at first of Maggie going into the sort of Maya voice that I do, but now I'm sort of drifting into pain for her, and she doesn't deserve the pain voice. Very well. Mr. Payne, please call your first witness. Hehehe, <laughs> it's been a while, Mr. Wright. Let's see what you've learned since last time. I won't show you any mercy this time, rookie. Okay... Who are you again? Please bring Detective Dick Gumshoe to the stand. Here we go. Don't let me down, Mr. Wright. Nowhere to hide. I'm so dead. Witness, please state your name and occupation. <clears throat> My name is Dick Gumshoe, sir. I'm the detective in charge of homicides down at the precinct, sir. You don't look very well, detective. Well, sir. Well, sir, the defendant, uh, she works under me, so you know. You work under that detective? Yes, sir, and while I was a trainee, he was always watching out for me, sir. He's such a wonderful guy, sir. I'll never forget what he's done for me. You say sir after everything just like Gumshoe did there, so... Seems you've, it seems you've learned at least something from him. Okay, calm down, I believe you. Detective Gumshoe, please describe for us the details of this murder. Yes, sir. It happened at the park near headquarters. Expose Park. The victim was one of the local cops, Dustin Prince. He was pushed down from the benches on the upper path, sir. The lander beat his body up at bad and snapped his neck. The details are listed in the report that was distributed yesterday. Ah, yes. This autopsy report, correct? Why do I not remember getting a copy? I see everything is in order here. 
Even the estimated time of death is unusually well documented. The victim's watch stopped from the, imp the impact of the landing, sir. The results of the autopsy confirm the time of death. If I may, Your Honor, the prosecution would like to submit this photograph. Very well. The court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 1 added to the court record. We'll get to the court record in just a second, once the tutorial catches up. Now then, I recall at yesterday's preliminary hearing, a very important piece of evidence was brought to our attention. Yes, Your Honor. Yes, sir. Yes, I guess? Mr. Wright, is your head on right today? There was a very crucial piece of evidence found under the victim's body. Uh, was there? Have you lost your mind? Well, actually... Um, it's just nerves. Give me a second. What? How can you talk like such an amateur? I thought you were a pro, sir. Alright, sir. I'll help you through this. Something that I haven't mentioned yet that you've probably noticed in the background is the soundtrack for this game is different from the first game, even though all of the visuals are super similar. In each game, they actually they actually hire someone new to do the soundtrack, and they have the same sorts of themes, like they have the basic court theme and the, you know, the objection theme and the cornered theme and stuff like that. Or I think it's called pursuit theme instead of the cornered theme. But that allows each game to have its own sense of style, even though, like I said, it's visually very similar. At a time like this, maybe you ought to take a glance at the court record. Court record? Yep, info about evidence and people involved with the case are all listed there, sir. You can look at the court record by touching the court record button. The court record button? You really know what you're talking about, huh? It's too bad I'm a cop, right? Just think, I could totally be a legal aid instead. Mr. Wright. Yes, Your Honor. Court is in session. Save your chit chat for later. S sorry, Your Honor. Well, I guess I'd better check the court record and see what I can find. By the way, why is Maggie over here? Anyway, what was it again? The court record button? I even in the first game when Maya was on trial, she wasn't allowed to be over on the defense's bench, but Maggie is, I guess, just to be the tutorial. Alright, Mr. Wright. Let's see if your notes are in order. What was the piece of evidence found underneath the victim's body? Well, let's go ahead and take a glance at the court record by pressing the court record button or the R button. So, for those of you who haven't played an Ace Attorney game before, which I would suggest at least watching my previous Let's Play on the first game because these games are a lot better if you play all of them in order. But yeah, you press the court record button and you get to see all of your evidence like this. Our attorney's badge. It's my all-important badge. It shows that I am a defense attorney. Cell phone. I found this in my pocket, but I don't remember what it means or how it got there. Dustin's autopsy report. Time of death, September 6th at 6.28pm. Cause, broken neck. Body was also covered in bruises. Glasses. Found under the victim's body. Pieces of nearsighted lenses were found nearby. Crime photo number one. The victim fell from the walking path above. Touch the check button for details. Indeed, we can see the photo that we saw earlier, and yeah, that's it. So, the answer to our question was glasses. That's the thing that was found underneath the victim's body. That's simple, Your Honor. A broken pair of glasses. That's right. The victim grabbed the criminal's glasses as he was being shoved, sir, and held on to them as he fell. Hey, why are you giving me the evil eye? Those glasses you're wearing. Mmm. Yes, this is my spare pair. But these glasses they found at the scene of the crime are not mine, I swear, sir. You sure about that? Look, it was a coincidence that on the same day I accidentally stepped on mine. A coincidence, she says. Ugh. <laughs> Your Honor, I have further evidence to present. Oh, you have more. Is this evidence is very decisive. Very well. Let's hear from our witness about this evidence. Our first testimony. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. 
I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. With this piece of evidence and the glasses, it's hard to say she's not the culprit. <clears throat> this is a picture of your writing, Your Honor. Why? Why, this is... Yes, I can see the name is clearly written here. The prosecution would like to submit this picture. Understood. The court accepts it into evidence. Crime photo 2 added to the court record. Let's see what it says. The photo of the area around the victim's hand. Touch the check button for details. There we go. Also, I didn't talk about the profiles. That's actually something interesting about Justice for All that I don't think really comes up in future games. I think maybe Trials and Tribulations does it a bit. But profiles are now presentable. They were always here in the background just to remind you about who's in the case, but they're actually like a big part of this game from what I remember, or at least for this first case. We have Maggie Bird, age 22. My client. The only thing I can recall is that she's a policewoman. Dustin Prince, age 30, the victim, and a policeman. It seems that he was dating the defendant, Maggie Bird. Winston Payne, age 53, the prosecutor for this case. Lacks presence, generally bad at getting his points across. And finally, Dick Gumshoe, age 31, detective at the local precinct, in charge of the initial investigation. So that's everyone here. One thing you'll notice about returning characters like Winston Payne and Dick Gumshoe is that they are each an, a year older than they were in the previous game, because this game takes place about a year after the first game. The first game took place uh, from, or at least the first four cases of the first game which I covered, take place from August to December of 2016, and this case that we're in right now takes place in September of 2017. So... A good while has passed since the first game. As if the glasses alone didn't make you look suspicious. The victim even wrote your name clear as day on the ground. But, 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 I already told you, those glasses aren't mine. How do you explain his dying message? It's a conspiracy. I'm not guilty, sir. Mr. Wright, you may cross-examine the witness. Cross-examine? This is it. I'm counting on you. Sure, but... What am I supposed to do? What? This isn't like you at all. Normally, this is the part where you get in the witnesses' faces. Get in their faces and do what? I guess there's no way around it. Okay, I'm going to lend you a hand. The prosecution's witnesses all hide things from the court, which means they lie from time to time. Lie? But isn't that detective your superior? Well, even if they don't mean to lie, sometimes people just remember things wrong. Hmm, like that detective. He does sort of look like a scatterbrain. It doesn't matter. Either way, it's bad for us, sir. That's why when you question the witnesses, you have to find and expose their lies. Mr. Wright, your cross-examination, please. Y yes, Your Honor. Talk about trial by fire. <sighs> Here goes nothing. As long as I can expose the lies, we should be alright. Our first cross-examination. So first thing you might notice that's a bit different, if you played the uh, DS version of the original game, is that if you look up in the top right corner of the top screen, that's a health bar right there. In the previous game, it was exclamation points, you were given five I think, and if you made a mistake, each one of them would be destroyed. A health bar, however, allows them to give you more or less of a penalty depending on how bad you're doing. Because if it's, like, the deciding moment of the case, you don't want to give the same penalty as, like, accidentally presenting the wrong evidence during testimony. So whenever they want to be like, hey, these things are getting serious now, you'll see that they give you more of a penalty at the health bar, and they'll be sure to warn you of that. Now, for those of you who didn't see my previous L LP, what we like to do here is press everything for all of the information, but if you want to just skip ahead to the actual solution, then you can go ahead and do that. I'll be sure to give time codes in the description and show, hey, here's where you want to go if you just want to skip right to the good stuff. For those of you who do want to see all the text, let's go ahead and get things started. There's something even more incriminating than the glasses under the victim's body, sir. <clears throat> Hmm, about those glasses. Do you have any proof that those belong to my client? 
The lenses are for nearsightedness and are almost the same strength as hers. Even the frames look kinda like the one she's wearing on her ID, pal. Hmm. What should I do now? Rule number one of Ace Attorney is always press further. Or continue pressing in this case. Hold it! Almost and kinda are not good enough to be in a case like this. Eh, uh, um... Do you have more definitive proof? Is there something that clearly links the defendant with those glasses? Eh, uh, um... Ah... Uh, the dirt in the sand rubbed out any traces of fingerprints or anything else. So what you're saying, detective... ...is that you have nothing that proves those glasses are my clients. Um, something like that. What? what I see. Hmm. So there is no proof. Wow, that was amazing. I could totally feel it down in my gut. During his date, the victim was pushed from the bench area. Now, you're sure he was pushed and that's how he fell? Yeah, pal. If you look at the wounds on the victim's body, there's no way it was anything else. Hmm. Please continue with your testimony, detective. Anyway, the victim fell pretty far. But he managed to write the culprit's name on the ground where he landed. The culprit's name? Yeah, I was surprised too. I didn't want to believe it, but... Was the name of... Was the name that of my client? I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name, Maggie, sir. So one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that in the DS version of this game, you'll notice that on the bottom screen there's a little what there's a little symbol for the Y button and some lines there. That's to show that on the DS you can go ahead and use the microphone by pressing Y and saying hold it into your in into the DS. So like this. Hold it. There we go. Are you absolutely certain? Sorry, pal, but that's what it said. This is a picture of it. No matter which way you look, it still says Maggie. Hmm, he's got a point. Hey, hold on. Huh? Don't harm me. I know the picture says Maggie, but... Now that she mentions it, something does feel kind of off about this picture. That's how you know you found a contradiction. Now hurry up and present some evidence. So that's what spotting a contradiction feels like. I'd better check the court record again. So that's a little hint, because this is the tutorial case, saying, Hey, look here for a contradiction. With this piece of evidence in the glasses, it's hard to say she's not the culprit. Hold on, I want to go ahead and do the hold it thing again, because it's really fun. Hold it! There we go. That's awesome. In the WiiWare version of this game, which some of you might not even know there was a WiiWare version, uh, instead of doing the microphone thing, you swung the Wii remote as if you were doing the objection point, and there's even some art of Phoenix doing it that comes up whenever you start with a testimony. And you are certain that it was the victim who wrote the name on the ground? There were scratches on his fingers from the rough sand, and there were grains of sand stuck under his pointer fingernail. Hmm, it certainly seems that the name was written by the victim himself. That didn't go well. If it really was him, then we're in a lot of trouble. Don't give up. Keep that fighting spirit going. I'm glad you're all pumped up, but... I really want to see your special move, sir. My what? You always look so cool when you present evidence. Present... evidence? Oh, that present evidence. Actually, I was just thinking about that. Yes, the great Phoenix Wright is back. Oh, that's right. Huh? I heard that lately you can present not only evidence, but people's profiles as well. It sure makes things a bit more complicated, so be careful, sir. People's profiles, huh? Alright, let's give this another try. Alrighty, so the solution for this cross-examination is we want to go ahead and go to the statement where he says, I don't like saying it, but it was clearly the defendant's name Maggie, sir. So he says clearly the defendant's name, but if we look at the defendant's name, it's Maggie spelled M-A-G-G-E-Y. However, in the photograph, it's spelled M-A-G-G-I-E, which is very different. It's a small difference, but a difference nonetheless. Objection!
What is it? What? What's come over me? Without thinking, I just blurted out objection. And I yelled it at the top of my lungs, finger outstretched, ready to take on my opponent. What a rush! Detective Gumshoe. E you talking to me, pal? Please state the defendant's name for me. What are you trying to prove with this futile exercise, Mr. Wright? You'll see. This is a very crucial line of questioning. Actually, Mr. Payne, you can answer. The defendant's name, if you please. W where is this ridiculous question coming from? The defendant's name, uh, name is, uh, Maggie Bird. I think someone needs to check the court record. What? It says right here that it's Maggie Bird. Ah! It looks like the bird caught the cat napping. What's going on here? I have no idea either, sir. As you can see, the victim did indeed leave a name, Maggie. However, the defendant's name is actually spelled M-A-G-G-E-Y. This is a blatant contradiction of facts. Oh, how about that? I hadn't even noticed. But, 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 but maybe the victim didn't know how to spell her name correctly. May I remind you that it was you who said, the defendant is accused of killing her lover. If they were truly lovers, it would be impossible for him to not have known her name. No! This is very true. Mr. Payne. Yes, your honor. Are you absolutely certain that the defendant and the victim, Dustin Prince, were in fact lovers? Yes, I am quite certain, Your Honor. They were a well-known couple in the police force. Detective Gumshoe, please testify for the court the relationship between the victim and the defendant. Y yes sir! Officer Prince and Officer Bird have been going out for about half a year. It sounded like they were even talking about marriage. The day of the incident just happened to be the victim's birthday, sir. Maggie, I mean, uh, Officer Bird, had gotten Officer Prince a present. It was something she had gotten over two months ago. I should know, because she came to me to ask what she should get for him. Oh, those two sound like they were close. Nevertheless, tragedy struck. Hmm, yes, I see. You may cross-examine the witness, Mr. Wright. And we will go ahead and cross-examine Detective Gumshoe in the next episode. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll see you guys next time. Goodbye!